morning guys! Today's our second day here in Seoul. So yesterday I wasn't able to vlog a proper intro because I was really exhausted. We landed Seoul at around 6 a.m. and went straight to our hotel. We just took a bus, had a really good nap. Throughout our bus ride, I could see that it was snowing. It was just so magical. Oh my god, the snow! It was such a nice view even if I was really groggy and sleepy. When we arrived at the hotel, we just left our luggage because it was too early for check-in. And then we just explored the city from the morning until late night. I really, really had such an amazing day yesterday. I think it's the best Christmas gift. I've been wanting to revisit Seoul after the pandemic because I haven't been here in nearly six years. It's been such a long time. Although I've been to Seoul a couple of times, about four to five times, so I visited most of the tourist spots. But over the years, I've seen that there are so many new changes, there are so many new cafes, restaurants, and just sites that I haven't seen yet. This vlog is not going to be for those who are coming to Seoul for the first time. I'll just be visiting new places that I haven't seen as well as revisiting those that I really want to see again. If you guys haven't visited Seoul for quite some time and just want to see what's new, this vlog is for you. This trip also is during Christmas time or during the winter season, so I'll be giving some tips if you guys are planning to come here during this time of the year. I think that we are very lucky because the past week it's been really cold like it hit negative 22 degrees but when we arrived Seoul yesterday it was about zero degrees so not so bad and I think we were more prepared for the weather. I also wanted to mention the sponsor for today's video which is DJI Philippines. I'm so excited to be partnering with them for this video because I really love their products. I recently purchased with my own money the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 which was recently released this year. I think it's the perfect travel camera and I'm actually vlogging with it right now. I'll just show you guys one of the cool features of this camera which is the face tracking. It's just following me. It's so cool. I think the best part about this camera is that it's really travel friendly and light. I used to bring a full frame, very heavy camera for my travel vlogs and I was really struggling. Actually more of Martin because he would always bring my bag. Majority of the time I'll be filming with this camera but I'll also be using my new camera which is the DJI Osmo Action 4. So this one I used yesterday because it was snowing and since it's waterproof, I think this was safer to use outside. So if you guys are considering these two cameras and want to see the differences, this vlog is also a good comparison video. I don't do technical videos like the specs and everything because there are a lot better vloggers out there who can really explain it. So this vlog will be more of my experience, my tips in using the camera. I think ultimately when you purchase a camera, it's really the quality and the final output that matters the most as well as your experience with it. So if you guys are considering a new travel camera, I highly recommend the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. I've already used it in my Sydney vlog last November and I was really really happy with it. I used it almost 95% of the time because I was just testing it out and it's really the perfect travel camera. It also shoots in 4K so you can really get good quality. You can purchase the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 either as a standalone camera, so just the standard package which just comes with the camera itself and just a few accessories, but I would recommend to get the Creator Combo because it's very well worth it. So if you buy the Creator Combo pack, you can get this bag, which is really compact. It fits everything, all the accessories. Very travel friendly. It comes with this case with a wide angle lens which I'm using right now that's why it's not here but there's a place to put the wide angle lens it's magnetic you also get this additional mount so it comes with a mic and then a wind muff and then it has a tripod and a longer external battery. I'll show you guys my filming setup right now just so that you can see that I'm already using everything. If you're choosing between the two, I highly recommend to get the Creator Combo Pack instead because it's just all in one. I'll put the links down below if you guys want to purchase it as well. I would highly recommend that if you see that one is in stock, just check out because it gets sold out so, so fast. Like I've already linked it so many times and it keeps getting sold out. So if you see it just grab it so i'll stop blabbing now because we have to head out it's nearly 11 a.m we really took our time this morning because we had such a long day yesterday so let's go we are taking the train for our first stop. The 
This is our team money card from years ago. Still works. Love the face tracking of the DJI Osmo pocket. Look. So we're gonna take another train from Seoul Station to get to our first spot. It's really getting warm today, guys. So nice. My hands are freezing though. Yeah, just my hands. But other than that, it's pretty good. Hopefully it stays this way. So our first stop is in Namsan. I wanna visit this. Popular K drama spot. They shot Ite One class here. One of the things I love about the DJ Osmo Pocket is the sound quality. I'm just using the inbuilt microphone. I'm not using any external microphone, and I think it's doing a pretty good job. There's a lot of noise right now. There's cars passing by, so let me know what you guys think as well. But so far, I think the sound quality is pretty amazing for such a small camera. You can also attach an external microphone, but I wouldn't really bring around one because it defeats the purpose of it being travel friendly. The colors are also nice too. I'm using the face tracking function, that's why you can follow me as I go and it's very steady. I'm also using the wide angle lens so that you can see more of the spots, including me. <laughs> Tell me that climbing is involved in this spot. I didn't even know <laughs> that we were gonna climb. It's our first time here. Nice though, look. Look, it's all ice. We're looking for this spot where they shot the day one pass. You can see the Namsan Tower from here. It's so nice, look. Another function of the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is the zoom in function. Try it out here. Oh, not bad, right? Wow, look at the view from here. The view here is really nice, guys. Wow, look at this. Wow, this is amazing. I highly recommend that you visit this spot because it's free from tourists. There's mostly just locals here. You'll be able to get nice photos without any people. The view of Namsan Tower here is really nice. It's getting quite cold. <laughs> I'll do a quick comparison of my phone versus the DJI Osmo Pocket so you guys can see the difference between the two in terms of stability. The colors are really nice. I'm not editing it. This is straight out of the camera using standard color profile. So we're gonna try to mount the camera and then walk up to see if it can track us. to the top actually not so bad i really like this place because it's so peaceful so i think this trail leads all the way up to namsan tower so we're at the very top it's a really nice view very peaceful it's a bit cold but manageable it's quite a lot of stairs i didn't even realize 
I think because we took a lot of breaks. We're now going to head back down. It's past noon already. We haven't had anything to eat, but we're trying to just maximize our time when the sun is still out because during winter season the sun sets really early at around 5 p.m so if you guys are coming during this time of the year just make sure to visit all the outdoor sceneries and spots in the daytime so that you can really appreciate it better my lips are getting super numb right now i'll just wear some gloves and stop talking <laughs> We're trying to sing the soundtrack of Ite One Class. Now we're watching Gyeongsong Creature, also with Park Soo Joon, and highly recommend it. Usually not my kind of genre, but it's really good. Han Soo Hee is such a versatile actress. We're looking for a bus stop to get to our next spot, which is Seoul Forest. So we're just using Google Maps to navigate around Seoul. We're not using Neighbor Maps. Usually people recommend to download Neighbor Map, but I think we're just too lazy <laughs> and we're creatures of habit because we use Google Maps in Singapore. In terms of finding reviews for places, you can find some on Google but they're a lot more on Neighbor and I think they're more accurate. You just have to translate which is kind of inconvenient. If you just want to know if a place is good or bad and decent and you want to see what people usually order, I would just stick to Google reviews but I think you can find more local restaurants using neighbor map. People usually go up to Namsan Tower. You can find the locks of love so they have also a very nice viewpoint there but because we've done that already in the past we're not gonna do it in this trip but if you're coming to Seoul for the first time I recommend going up and taking the cable car. <sighs> okay we're crossing. See how stable it is guys? If I bring my full frame camera, so I like, break my arm. <laughs> you can also shoot in vlog format if you want to do a lot of post-processing after. But I would just stick to their normal profile because it's a lot of work. And I think the file size also is bigger if it's vlog if I'm not mistaken. But you guys can try it out if you want to experiment and add more cinematic filters. suddenly became popular in the past year. There are a lot of trendy local shops here as well as cafes. We're now heading to a bakery that sells salt bread. Martin and I have been wanting to try one of the things that has gotten popular as well over the past years. This reminds me of Sinsa but more lively. We're now queuing for the salt bread. So we arrived at 2 p.m. here, which is one of the time slots where they produce the bread. So make sure to check out the time slots and come here during that time. They only produce 7,000 pieces daily, so they can really run out if you don't make it on time. Before you queue, make sure to go to the counter to get a queue number. A pack of four costs 12,000 won, which is quite pricey. I think that's the only thing on the menu, is it? Yeah, yeah. It smells really good, guys. I can't wait to try it. them good and it's freshly baked. We got a pack of four. They only have one thing on the menu. So this costs 12,000 won. Let's try it. It's so cute. The queue wasn't so bad. I think we only queued for about five minutes. Just make sure to come on time so that they don't run out. Very buttery. Rate this 3.5 out of 5. It's not as soft as I wanted it to be. It has the right amount of butter, not too buttery like a croissant, but still flaky at the very top. I think that it's just quite chewy. I couldn't really bite into it, like it wasn't that soft. Maybe it was out for quite a bit. It's just quite expensive given that you only get four pieces for 12,000 won. It's flaky, but it's a bit tough. If you pull it right, it's kind of hard to pull apart. I was kind of underwhelmed. It's really hard to bite. Personally, I wouldn't queue for this if it would take an hour. Bread is quite huge, quite filling as well, but I would still say that it's a bit pricey. I wish they only sell per piece. I would just get one. 
This is our first meal of the day actually. I have bread all over my hair. Time to go shopping now. It grows on you. It's not too buttery and not too heavy. That's why we can have a lot. Ooh, this is a nice store. Very buffer. Sold out. Sad. Yeah. And the white. Oh, cute. I like the length of the bag. The leather is quite nice. Very soft leather. Feels very high quality. I think for the price, not quite bad. This is 81,900. Not bad. I don't like the red stitch. This one's 80,000. The leather is so nice. Quite spacious. My camera can fit here. The DJI Osmo Pocket can definitely fit. I want to get one bag. I think it's quite reasonable for the quality. It's really nice material. I'm quite surprised. Which one do you like better? I'm a member. Huh? You're a member now. I'm a member now. My first hand oil bag, I would come back to this store just because the prices are really good for the quality. Highly recommend that you check this one out if you guys are into bags or just want yet a local brand. I think they're Korean if I'm not mistaken. I got this for about 76,000 won with a discount of 10% because it's their holiday promotion and the tax refund. Which is not bad for the bag I got. They also have a branch of tambourines here. Looks really cool. This Dior store is so pretty. Recommended this cafe. 
Was it you? Me, of course, me. It's actually really nice. Is it this? No, it's this one. It's this one. Oh my gosh, I thought it was close. for a very long time because I see it in all the Korean celebrities. The shop here is really small but I think it's nice because it's not too overwhelming. They have a lot of different colors and different kinds of bags but I decided to go for this one because it's what I really wanted. Luckily they had stock because based on the other reviews I read sometimes they have a lot of things that are sold out even if it's on display. Just take note that they don't have tax refund here so the item I got is about 30,001 plus. I think it's quite reasonable for the brand and the label. Happy me. Are you gonna wear it? <laughs> we are at Seoul Sook area. We just walked from Songsu. It was quite a walk but not too far. There are a lot of trendy cafes here as well as shops. So if you guys are looking for a new area to explore in Seoul, I highly recommend this one. A lot of interesting finds here. What year? Uh, 2023. Wow, oh, so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like gold. <laughs> We just checked out this coffee shop called Cafe Mesh. So Martin got some beans because he already had coffee earlier. The coffee was a cup of excellence, which means that it's like some award-winning coffee. It was a geisha from Honduras, which probably means that it's very peachy, very soft, very yummy, very juicy. But, but it's, <laughs> it's $30 for 50 grams. Usually you would get like bags of 200 to 250. So that's what, 150 to 200 dollars per 200 gram bag. So no way. In short, too expensive. Too expensive. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys are looking for a burger place in Seoul, this one is highly recommended. So it's called Zesty Saloon. Most of the locals go here as well. They have this wasabi shrimp burger, which is one of their best sellers. I really wanted to try it, but I don't think we have time in this trip, so maybe next time. Try it out for me instead and let me know if you guys like it. So extra. We are now at Seoul Forest. It's very close by the area. I think we've been here before. I just don't recall. I think it's always nice to come to a park in different seasons and so you can see the difference in foliage. Right now there are no leaves at all because it's winter the sunset it's very peaceful here guys it's a nice place to watch the sunset there's a lot of trees so I think any season you go here will be quite magical our first sunset was yesterday we didn't catch it It's 85. Actually, the material is quite similar to sand oil, but this is more expensive. This is 119. They have nice bags. The quality is pretty similar to stand oil but a lot more expensive. This small bag is 119 and I don't like how they do the enclosure. It's hard to open. 
but the style is pretty unique. It looks nice but not so functional. This is with wide angle, this is without, see the difference? So many photo booth places here. This one's all blue. Wow. They even have hair styling tools. Where do we pay? They have so much accessories. Kinda crazy. This place is like so extra. There's so much props. Self photo shoot studios like this has really become trending in Korea. Even in Singapore, every city or every town you'll probably find a photo shoot studio like this. Did you really go to Korea if you didn't go to a self photo shoot spot? QR code and then you can see a video as well as the photos online. It's like similar to yours. <laughs> oh really? From here? This brand. Without the low light function, this is when low light is enabled. It's already very late. I enabled the low light function of the camera and I think it's doing pretty well. I'll try it without so you guys can see the difference. This is without low light enabled. This is with the low light feature on. So this is without the low light enabled. I think both are okay, right? It's so cozy. We were supposed to have dinner at grandmother's recipe over there, but unfortunately they're closed every Tuesday. We didn't even do our research today, but it's okay, just find a different place to eat. If you guys are looking for a Korean homestyle kind of food, check out Grandmother's recipe. I was really looking forward to eating here, but we'll just try it next time, I guess. I guess you have to go back to Korea. Just a tip if you're planning to visit certain restaurants, make sure to check the operating hours on Neighbor Map, not Google, because on Google it actually said that it's open today. It might be more accurate. We're here at Somunan Kalbuksu. I just found this place on Google because I was looking for a place that serves seafood kalbuksu. Usually kalbuksu has meat, so my choices were quite limited. If you guys are looking for a popular kalbuksu place, there's one in Myeongdong, but I couldn't eat anything there. This one is located in Gangnam, near our next spot. This place looks really legit because they don't have any English menu. We had to take a photo of the menu and upload it on Google Translate just so that we can get the English 
sausage version. So their specialty is their seafood kalbuksu. So they have several kinds. They have clam, they have seafood. I ordered the seafood one. I also just chanced upon this restaurant on Google because as mentioned earlier, we were really planning to eat in grandmother's recipe, but because they're closed, I had to look for an alternative. Hope it's good. Oh my gosh, a lot. Oh my god, this is a huge bowl. Look at my hand, guys. It's huge. How's the mandu? It's really good. It's huge. Originally, I wanted to try the kalbuksu at Guangzhou Market, which is very popular. If you've seen other Seoul vlogs, you'd see that everyone goes to that market just to try the noodles from the Netflix series. I think I would only go there during summertime or spring season because I think it's too cold to eat out. It's still better to eat in a restaurant during winter time because it's well insulated. I think next time I'll try it out. Mm. Wow, tastes very fresh. I think this is our cheapest meal. C squared, I think. Huh? What's this? C squared. C squared. Yeah. Mm. So far, the food is really authentic. It's also quite nice because we're the only ones here, so I can vlog properly. The food is quite overwhelming. I didn't expect the serving size to be this big. It's really well worth the price. This big bowl of soup is 12,000 won only and this can feed like four people. The dumplings are also very plump, filled with a lot of meat and veggies. I can't eat it though because I don't eat meat but Martin said that it's really good. The kimchi also is really authentic. It's very crunchy. You can really hear the crispiness and the freshness. I really like the kimchi even if it's super spicy. This is like authentic kimchi, not the ones you buy in store. You even have to cut it. You can also tell that the noodles are handmade by the texture, even the way it looks. I also recommend that you get the seafood kalwoksu so that it's not just all clams. It comes with crabs and shrimp as well. I really like the soup. It tastes more home style. It's not too flavorful. The soup is seafood broth but it's not too salty. It's very well balanced. It tastes really like something you would eat at your grandma's house. <laughs> in hindsight is what we really wanted to try because the restaurant we originally wanted to eat in was called Grandmother's Recipe but because it's closed, I'm glad we still ended up in a similar kind of restaurant. Martin and I would rate this place 4 out of 5 because the seafood itself tastes very fresh. There's a lot of clams and mussels. I really cannot finish it. As for the mandu, Martin really enjoyed it. I think he's going to be able to finish it. I'll show you guys how filling it is. There's only half of it. I think that if you eat in a market like Guangzhou Market, the size of the dumpling is probably half of what they served us. We only paid 8,000 won for five huge dumplings. If you're looking for an authentic restaurant, there are a lot of other restaurants that serve kalbuksu apart from Yongdong, Kyoja, and Guangzhou Market. We are at Coex Mall just to visit the library once again. We've been to this Starfield Library several times but have some Christmas decor this time, so we'll check it out. happy that we caught the light show. We just came right on time. I'm not sure if they have regular light shows. This one was really nice. It was Christmas themed. I think this place is one of the popular spots, especially if it's your first time here in Seoul. I highly recommend it because it's a different kind of library. If you're a book lover, this is one place that you must visit in Seoul.